know, transitioning from a single engine to a turbofan uh, with two engines is quite the change and the change of performance as well. You're moving a lot faster. It kind of just inspired me to go for it. I was at home all day, living at home obviously, and then working from home. And so I just needed something to get into that would get me out of bed every day. Hey guys, it's Matthew from Sling Pilot Academy. This week we sit down with Jaden a Sling alumni who's recently moved on to corporate aviation. Stay tuned to hear about his journey and how it's going at his new job so far. Enjoy the video. Uh, hi, my name is Jaden Millar and I did my last instruction flight beginning of December of 2023. Amazing, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's the goal definitely to hit 1500 hours that uh, you come in from zero and you know that that's where you're headed and sometimes it feels like you'll never hit it, but um, it felt, yeah, it felt great finally getting there. And um, I think everyone tries to make their flight where they hit 1500, something fun. Um, so flew down to San Diego with my fiance and um, she's learning how to fly as well, so it works out. And um, just did a fun little trip to go get some lunch and it was a great way to celebrate hitting 15. So I just finished IOE at, um, I work at FlexJet now. And so just finished all the training and the initial operating experience a few days ago, actually. So that was kind of what absorbed my life for the last three months is just all the training, studying, memorization. Um, it's a lot to do. So now that I'm done with that, I'm just uh, working on the line flying. It's kind of what I imagined it would be like, but also not what I imagined. It's so cool just finally getting there, you know, transitioning from a single engine to a turbofan. Uh, with two engines is quite the change and the change of performance as well. You're moving a lot faster, everything happens a lot faster, and you transition kind of straight out of the simulator into flying with an instructor pilot. And uh, so it can, be, it can be overwhelming, but uh, I had a total blast. Uh, I had a really great instructor pilot and um, it was an insane ex experience, honestly, just flying, flying a jet for the first time. I can't, can't really explain it in words. Um, just gotta go do it. Well, a couple things. I, I always wanted to do it because my grandpa was a captain for United for decades. And uh, so that was always kind of in the back of my head was to get into it at some point. Then uh, COVID hit, you know, that kind of was like where everybody transitioned and found themselves, I guess. Buddy, I hadn't talked to him in a while and he reached out and just told me where he was at now in his career. Last time I had talked to him, he was just finishing up flight school and now he was um, getting hired at Delta. So I was like, wow, you really did that fast. I didn't realize like that was even possible. You know, I'd imagine it would take a lot longer to go from learning to fly in the first place to going to a major. It kind of just inspired me to go for it. I was at home all day, living at home obviously, and then working from home. And so I just needed something to get into that would get me out of bed every day. Producing music for ads and movie trailers, music that goes behind TV shows, reality TV, all that kind of stuff. And um, working with my partner, his name's Matt. COVID happened, we were able to still continue and it didn't really get in our way too much. I, I still do that, which is awesome. It's, a, it's great to be able to not have to stop doing that and fly. I still do it as much as I used to do it, really. Slowed down a little bit with training, you know, being every day and traveling, but now that I'm on the line, I'm actually looking forward to getting back into it full time again. You can be a full time musician working on music a couple times a week, realistically. Because um, you have to be inspired at the end of the day, you can't work 24 seven. So um, yeah, I'm able to do both and um, they work well together. One is one, set, one half of your brain, one is the other half of your brain. So uh, it's nice to transition back and forth between them. It's a lot, you know, you're going from obviously never flying a plane, then you go on a discovery flight, you get inspired, you're ready to go. So you're going at a thousand miles per minute, um, learning, studying, going from rating to rating, you know, you have ups and downs. Uh, everybody does. No one has a perfect run learning how to fly a plane. Going to Sling actually made for the transition being a little bit smoother, a, a lot of it smoother. Because, you know, at Sling obviously we have glass avionics and we have autopilot and things that if you had not experienced and you try to go do a simulator evaluation at a 135 or part 91 company, which most of them do, um, you'd be in for a big wake up call because that's stuff that you can't learn overnight and so it helps to flown hundreds of hours in a plane that has it already um, so that when you get into a jet and you get into a motion sim for the first time at least some of the things you've already experienced like autopilot and 
flying with glass and following a flight director and all that kind of stuff they're gonna expect you to know how to do. So I, I can imagine I would not have even had a chance at this job had I not gone to Sling, seriously. They're very different. They're very similar in some ways, but yeah, very different in other ways. I would say the most rewarding things about flying for a 135 or 91 or just anything corporate really is you get to fly to a lot of remote air, uh, airports. You get to maybe experience international travel way earlier on in your career. For example, I went my first week I was in another country, so I can't imagine flying with airlines. It might take a while for you to get to that point. So that was really cool, just jumping right in. Um, as an FO, going international, and just getting thrown in the deep end, really. Um, but you realize that you're capable of it at the end of the day. You just have to keep focused and do it. Th these aircraft that you're flying at these operations, they're like, I like to say they're like sports cars, uh, but planes, you know, versus like something that might feel more like a city bus, right? You're getting into a literal rocket ship, and it feels great to be a pilot in one of those aircraft as well, because up front even, it's luxurious and comfortable and um, really modern, and so that's cool. I, I got into flying because I like flying. It wasn't, wasn't about anything else, um, and so that worked out for me because because I like flying, I love flying these types of planes. They're, they're really like a pilot's plane. You might have heard that phrase before, um, and they really are. They're, they're meant for someone who like enjoys flying, doesn't want to just pop autopilot on, wants to go full power and fly by hand to whatever altitude they want and it, it wants to be flown like that. So that, that's the biggest difference. Another big difference with these two types of operations is you, you have a pretty uh, easy time choosing your own schedule if you want to, right? You can bid, it obviously depends on where you go, but you can bid, you can choose a set schedule. So if you want to just start work every Monday and finish up every Monday and then have that next six days off, uh, for an entire six month period, you can do that, right? If you like a dependable schedule that you know what it's gonna be at a time, you can do that. But you can also bid. Um, so you have flexibility, which is nice. Uh, you could work 14 days on maybe, you could work a couple days on. Obviously it depends on where you go, depends on where you live. Um, but that kind of leads me to the next thing. Uh, you can live really, again, depending on where you go, but you can live anywhere um, and be based at home. Maybe you commute, but um, oftentimes you'll have the option to fly positive space to where you're going and then meet your aircraft where, where it's currently parked at, fly for the week or however long your rotation is, and then fly back positive space. And you're not worrying so much about flying standby, leaving a day early, not knowing how that's gonna go. So that's kind of nice. You're not freaking out the day before your rotation, trying to figure out how you're gonna get there with a backup plan and a couple options. You just, you know where you're going, you know, what airline you're flying to get there, and you go and you do it. Uh, that's a good question. I, I think when I first was kind of, not persuaded, but was introduced to the idea of actually going for it by my, my buddy, um, because he was in an airline, I was like, well, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, but after starting training, going and flying cross countries, going to FBOs, kind of just experiencing it for myself, I really realized that this is what I wanna do, is fly corporate, fly with passengers, getting to know people, it's a very, personable experience versus kind of just walking behind the door, closing it and flying and then leaving. You know, it's, you take pride in your aircraft. You get to be rewarded by everything going well, right? If everything goes well, which it does, you feel like you had a, a play in that and you had a say in how that went and you're responsible for that, which is awesome. It's still a team effort at the end of the day, just like every operation is, but um, you feel like you did some you feel like you did extra almost. Um, you make sure that the plane's stocked up. You make sure that it's clean. You make sure that everyone gets on safely. You make sure that you can fly that, whatever leg that is safely. You, you have a little bit more hands-on experience, right? You're not just handed a, a dispatch and you go. Um, you're told where you're gonna go and the flight plan might be done, but you make sure that the weight and balance looks good. You make sure you got the right amount of fuel. You make sure that everybody who they say is getting on your plane is who they say they are and you know you're just responsible for a lot more which is cool keeps you on on your a game keeps you from getting complacent which as a pilot is huge because um, if you're just doing turns over and over again and you're going the same places which can be what you end up doing um, at a big airline you might get a little complacent and you'd have to force yourself to not so 
flying in an, op an operation like this really forces you to stay on your toes and make sure that you don't end up complacent, really. My, my experience here was awesome. I mean, the, there's nowhere else you can go with the amount of opportunity that you have at Sling. Um, the student body here is very large, so that means as an instructor, you're not sitting around, you're flying. You know, if the weather's great, you're, you're out there and you're flying. That's hard to find anywhere else. I mean, thankfully, I didn't have to look super far. I live close to Sling, um, and I was referred to it by a buddy. And so I didn't really look too many other places, but having gone here, having had a lot of time pass since I first decided to go here and seeing how other people's experiences have gone at other schools, seeing how long it's taken them to go from zero hours to flying uh, professionally, just kind of taking all that data in and figuring out that Sling definitely was like the right place to go. I got lucky. I, I didn't look super far, like I said, but um, experience here was great. It's a family vibe. I'm sure you've heard it if you watch this YouTube channel a million times, but uh, that's because it really is. Um, everybody cares about each other. Everyone pushes each other here. And um, so you're studying super hard. It's difficult some days, but honestly, it's nice to just walk in here, see everybody smiling face and just have a good time training at the end of the day. It's not, it's not glum around here. Everybody's just having a blast, so. My biggest obstacle in training, I would say, is just kind of transitioning into becoming an instructor. You know, you're going from learning how to fly to very quickly teaching people how to fly, right? And you are qualified, you've met all of the qualifications, you have done everything right, but still, I think everybody who's become a CFI has probably experienced a little bit of imposter syndrome. Should I be here? Do I deserve to be teaching people how to fly? And I think really, you know, if you've gotten to that point, you do. Miss Sling doesn't just hire anybody. You have to be someone who they can trust. You have to be somebody who's done well, who's put in a lot of time mentoring students before you even get to being a CFI. You're, you're practicing teaching, so that was hard, just getting over like, do I deserve to be here kind of feelings to the place where you feel comfortable up there and you're not just like looking over your shoulder every three seconds um, and you kind of get into a flow. You might have like typical things that you like to do and then that way it kind of takes your attention off of like thinking, what am I gonna do up here with a student today? And then you can focus a little bit more on keeping everybody safe and you know teaching them efficiently, right? So that was a tough one, just figuring that out. There's a lot of flights that stick out to me. If I had to, I could come up with like 20 that were super memorable, 10 or 20, but uh, my instructor at the time who did my commercial and multi-engine, his name's Keith, we went to fly all the way from here up to uh, Auburn, which is near Sacramento. That's where my grandpa lives. And we flew all the way up the coast the whole way. Uh, got to take my grandpa flying, and he's done a little bit of flying since he retired, but maybe a few times. You can count on, count on one hand how many times he's gone. So that was really cool for him to see this aircraft. You know, he's used to steam gauge, so when he got in, he was like, where's the airspeed? And just, it was a crazy experience for him to get in there and fly around, but it definitely was like he had never left. He flew, he was able to fly with me sitting next to him like it, it was yesterday. He was flying in the DC-10, so um, that was cool. And then the way back, we came the other way. We went around the Sierras, flew over Lake Tahoe, and went and did some soft field landings in the middle of the desert, Mojave Desert. So I'd say that's the coolest thing about Sling is you can just go out there and experience stuff and go explore California, go explore other states nearby super easily. These planes are capable. They're, they're performers, so, you know, we got to kind of see like every aspect California has to offer in one little trip. It was probably, I think, 10 or 11 hours of flying or something like that. Um, but that, yeah, that was the most memorable overall, yeah. I go do a discovery flight. Like, if you're thinking about it at all, that's enough for you to just go do a discovery flight. Um, oftentimes, they're, they're free as well. If you, exp you know, express that you're interested in going a lot of places and come, come fly here, we, we do, discovery flights left and right because it's a great place to fly here go check it out see if it's something that you'd want to do go go get behind the controls fly a plane and see if it's something that freaks you out um, or if it's something that really you know sparks your interest and then uh, as far as like getting into corporate i think the first time i really started to get interested in it was just flying my cross-country flights for instrument uh, getting to go to fbo seeing corporate jets on the ramp. One day I remember I was at Santa Barbara for like half the day at an FBO and just seeing just in and out, you know, the plane rolls up on the ramp. It's almost like it's the president of the United States is on that plane. They've got a black car rolling up immediately to pick, to pick up the passengers, help them with whatever they need. The, the ramp staff is coming out to take care of the plane, refuel it. 
Um, it was just cool. It really inspired me seeing that whole process go down. The, the type of aviation you end up in after you hit your hours, everybody's different. Everyone's going to love something different. You got to just experience it. At the end of the day, you never know until you try it. So I can't tell anyone which side of the business to end up in. Um, all I know is that I really enjoy corporate and it's something to look into. Actually, it's sling my biggest achievement, just soloing. Like the, there's nothing that beats that. I think everybody for the most part is going to agree with that's like the top three things that they've ever done as a pilot, maybe even in their life too. Like soloing, flying a plane by yourself, that early on as well, you know, um, some places do it after you've done every other requirement and then you solo at the end. Here we, you know, we choose to put the trust in the student and if they're ready, they're ready to go. And so it might happen like four or five, you know, six weeks in with someone who's really proficient and studies hard. That's pretty crazy that you're flying a plane on your own. So that's a big achievement. And I remember, I still remember like everything about that day for me. And I'm sure a lot of people uh, at the school can agree. Like they remember vividly how that day went. So probably my CFI check ride, maybe. That was a big one. It's a lot to study. And um, just again, transitioning to CFI was tough. So getting through that and, you know, building the time. And I'm here now. So I can say that was a big, uh, big moment too. Yeah, um, definitely. Like I said, it's a family vibe here. Everybody looks out for each other, whether it's the students or you're talking about the actual faculty here. We have, you'd think it's your actual family, definitely. Um, they wanna see you do well. If you fall behind, they help you get back on your feet. Uh, they make sure that you're getting your check ride scheduled. They make sure that you're staying healthy, that you are happy. They really do look out for you on another level, not just, you know, making sure you show up for your flights. They want, if you don't, then they wanna know why. They wanna see if they can help you out in any way um, and make sure you're taken care of. So uh, that, that was huge for me. And uh, I think that they're lifelong connections, you know, I won't lose touch with any of the people that I've worked with here and that have helped me out throughout my journey. So that's pretty cool. They, they love that I'm doing it. I mean, my dad, uh, his dad was the pilot in our family and so he, he loves it and uh, I talk to my grandpa at every um, you know milestone that I hit I call him and he's just delighted that I'm doing this so that's been really cool to just keep him updated he's getting older so this kind of stuff was like extremely exciting for him just to hear that I've you know, passed this check ride or got this type rating or whatever it is he's just I think he just waits by the phone to hear about it which is cool and then my mom uh, loves it. I mean, everyone, everyone loves it. It's cool. It's a cool thing to do. Being a pilot, they've all gotten to experience it too. I think I've taken everybody flying at one point or another. Like I said, it's nice. I think they all support me because they know that it wasn't me stopping my past career. What's nice is I'm able to do both, which is cool. I can be in a hotel room somewhere and be writing music on my laptop. I don't need a studio, so that's great. I can do both at the same time. And uh, there's not a lot of careers you could say that about where you could do both things and not have to stop one so it's another reason to get into aviation if you do something else already but you're looking for something that just change your life and make it a lot more exciting this is one of the few things you can do where you can have maybe two careers um, so that's great that's a great thing about it well so when you work in 135 or 91 you don't turn 65 and get booted out of the cockpit if you're passing your medical and you feel fit to fly there's no reason for them to get, you know, get rid of you as a pilot and make you retire. So that's a that's a huge benefit. And so you won't hit 65 and immediately have to think about, okay, where am I going to go now? What am I going to transition into? If you're already in corporate, you're not going anywhere. You'd stay. And a lot of companies, people are retiring in their 80s, and they're still perfectly capable of flying. Um, can't say that for every single person. So as long as you're passing your medical, there's no reason for them to stop you. So that's nice. You could go as long as you want and feel you know good doing so which is great kind of already talked about it a little bit but just to reiterate flying with a glass panel and autopilot was huge because even if you go somewhere that doesn't have a simulator evaluation right and you just get you get the job you go through and maybe you somehow without all of that experience you somehow pass your type rating and you get there but then you get on the line and you don't have any experience with vertical navigation or using autopilot. Maybe you know the different modes and you've read online about what the different modes do, but there's a huge thing that you don't realize and that's knowing how to transition between those things. And when do I use VNAV and when do I use approach mode? When do I use indicated airspeed mode? Like it was huge me using that mode here 
indicated airspeed because that's pretty much like a flight level change. And if you've got no experience with that and you get into a jet and you're expected to know how to smoothly climb and step up your climb, you're going to be pulling G's and the people in the back are going to be screaming if you've never experienced like how to transition smoothly through those things. So that was huge. Just getting experience with autopilot. There's a lot of flight schools that have planes with autopilot, but they'll pull the breaker and you can't use it on a perfect day, but I'm glad Sling doesn't do that. We, we encourage using autopilot as long as the, you know, everything allows for it and your instructor thinks that it's a good moment and you, you're already good at hand flying, you should know how to use autopilot. It should be a 50-50 thing, right? Um, because autopilot does whatever you tell it to do. It's not smart. Autopilot is silly, right? It just does what you tell it. So if you tell it to do the wrong thing, it's gonna be unsafe at the end of the day. So. Having experience with that and flying glass was huge. And um, I don't know many other schools where you're gonna leave with 1,500 or so hours of TAA time. That's huge. I've instructed people with 10, right? They were just trying to get their 10. So I can't imagine having only a couple hours of, of uh, TAA time. This was huge, leaving with virtually all of them being in a technology, technologically advanced aircraft. I guess two things. If you're already in aviation, um, just keep going. I know, like I said, there's moments where you will want to give up and you'll have a bad flight. Maybe your instructor will be disappointed in something you did or you're critical of yourself like I am and I've had days where I just wanted to you know, take a break or stop. Just don't. Just go home, have a nice dinner, take a breather, go work out, whatever you got to do to like, get your mind off of it and go back the next day and just do better and improve and whatever you need to do. If you need to journal about it, if you need to write it down, like what I did wrong today, what I can do better tomorrow. Just whatever you do, don't, don't take a break, don't give up, um, keep going. And if you're somebody who is thinking about getting into aviation and has not done so yet, like I said, go check it out, go fly, see if it's something you'd wanna do. There's a lot of hurdles in getting um, into flying, you know, financial, whatever it is, whether it's where you're living, there's always gonna be hurdles getting into flying, but whatever you do, don't let those get in your way, just go for it. There's always a way to make it work. Your family's gonna wanna support you doing it. Sling's gonna wanna support you doing it. Um, there's, like I said, always a way to make it happen. So if you're in it, don't give up. And if you haven't started yet, don't give up, for sure. Thanks for watching the video. If you guys like Jaden's story, check out this video, where he and his partner, Matt, team up with Sling to make a beat at 10,000 feet using nothing but noises from the plane. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and drop us a comment to let us know what you think.